Welcome to the Creator's Toolkit. I'm Yanni Blue from Bigger Than Our Dreams. And I'm Mike Brown from The Art of Letting Go. This podcast series is inspired by our second annual Merch Madness contest, where we will be exploring entrepreneurship for creatives and community building in the digital era. That's right. And in this season, we share our personal journeys of building brands and creating merch. We'll also be sitting down with fellow artists, branding experts, and fashion professionals, all while competing to see who sells the most merch in the month of March. We're excited to dive into the tools, techniques, and strategies that can help you succeed as a creator in today's fast-paced world. So, welcome to the Creator's Toolkit. All right, so welcome to the Creator's Toolkit. Yeah, this is episode four Yes, that we are releasing. Um, how are you feeling today? Feeling pretty good, you? I'm feeling good. Um, I recorded, I I feel like I'm in that mode now recording podcasts back to back today, but it's funny. The last podcast I did, um, really brought up a lot for me. And I know now, now it's starting to feel all my, all my pods are starting to intertwine because it's feeling very hard to letting go right now. But, um, yeah, I've been thinking a lot about this podcast and just, where we started, where it's at today, and what's been coming up for me in the process of it. And I think I've lost, not lost, but I got lost in the marketing side of it as opposed to just the creative part of it. Um, This has been a process for me starting something new and in the process of, which is so funny, this is a podcast, that I felt like was started for creative entrepreneurs, but also being a creative entrepreneur, but inserting myself back into the job world and looking at this as my quote unquote resume. um, It was confusing the work that I was doing for this show. And what I mean by that is like applying for a social media job where they're looking for your ability to grow a business, grow a page, grow a company. And I can't even do it with a, with a page that's my own. And I get it. Like they have budgets and shit like that. But, um, that shit can be confusing and it, and it can be, uh, yeah, it, it can, um, it can feel invalidating. Like I'm very much so a person when I think about how I started my first show, I didn't think about numbers. I just did the show. I didn't think about going crazy with promo because I just wanted to do the show. And I think working backwards in this has made it challenging for me and acknowledging it has made me want to shift my energy and just really focus in creatively. That's cool. I think uh, doing this show for me <clears throat> has brought up how well adjusted I am to knowing that things take time. Because I definitely used to be a hurry up and why aren't things moving uh, kind of person. But coming into this season of my life creatively, I've had a lot of patience for all the projects that I've been a part of. And um, I definitely have been learning through putting this together that... Um, when you know you feel good about something and you know you're doing everything you can that is the reward for me um so like for example with this podcast um i've been really enjoying the feedback and the interactions that i that i have been getting maybe even too much i think at one point i got was getting so excited i wanted to add more interviews and do more stuff and and not understanding that um you know there was still a plan and and kind of keeping it concise so I'm learning to to temper my expectations and to, you know, um, just kind of stick to the plan. But I definitely appreciate that that I'm in a space where I, I know that things take time now um, because I wasn't always like that. So I've definitely had a lot of patience and feeling really good um, about the way things have been going. So it's going to be uh, cool to wrap up and see how people discover it if they discover it and just kind of have something to show that, like, you know, we could complete a season. 
And I've been really proud of how the song has been doing that we attach to the show. So that's been great. Yes. Yes. Shout out to y'all for listening. Shout out to y'all for listening to the show. Shout out to y'all for listening to the music. I think for myself, as far as uh, getting it to people, I think I really want to get through putting the season out and then promoting it. Um, That just feels like a more healthy way for me. Like I was really giving it some thought and uh, we definitely released a podcast at a wild time of just life uh <laughs> to start a new podcast while you know moving while you know just doing a lot it I guess for me being in a space of like anything I do I want to put all my energy into it and not feeling like I can't put all my energy into it at times um was frustrate is it frustrating <laughs> is that the word is that how you say it fruss or fluss <laughs> the r <laughs> it was frustrating um you know and like really give it i've i've had to give myself grace give you grace give us grace because um those first couple of weeks it did feel like a heavy lift um i know by choice i was doing all of the production by myself and then having to do the promotion, but also recognizing and acknowledging like you were moving. And then when I was moving, you know, like I appreciate you this last week, like really taking over all the social media stuff and all that. Cause uh, yeah, it, it felt like a lot. And, you know, like I said, we've had so many life pieces and I think that is something that, people don't really talk about in doing this type of work is like life happens and um it's not easy it's not easy at all to be an artist a creative entrepreneur like just to do anything for yourself like it's not that easy no it's it's definitely hard and things like you said life does impact your energy because creative energy does kind of flow from emotions so you know whatever emotional state you're in i think is enhanced in the creativity and being independent, like I was having this conversation with uh, a friend of a mutual friend of ours who's getting ready to do a project. And um, I was reminding him, because he's at the very beginning of it, I was like, you know, take your time to be each role because you are going to hit a space where, you know, he had presented a marketing campaign for an album that didn't exist yet. And I thought that was cool, but I also can understand like getting lost in the marketing and not being able to focus on the songs. And there, there there's a whole lot of ways where we could just kind of get lost in creating and it is very relevant to this podcast because at every every person that we've spoken to has talked about just the struggle of you know trying to stay creative while trying to be a business um so i think what i what i would take away from this and what i would offer our audience is to like really take your time with everything you do really give yourself grace understand that you are a small business you're starting from the bottom, you know, you really have to take those steps to the best of your ability and give yourself space when you need it because um, it is hard to market and sell products and try to monetize when you're not feeling great about the work that you're putting in or you're feeling overwhelmed. So definitely a learning, a learning uh, experience. Well, I do want to say I appreciate you um, giving me the space to show up however I show up um for this podcast planning this podcast putting it out um sometimes being very stubborn in my ideas and stuff i appreciate you giving me the space for that no problem so if y'all are ready now we can get into the show this week we're joined by tk a remarkable audio storyteller and artist who made a profound pivot from the medical field to pursue her passion in audio. TK has been mentoring Mike Brown for the last year and they connected through Air Media and have been working on some inspiring collaborations. Today we explore TK's journey, navigating artistic pivots and the transformative power of storytelling in your products. Being that you work in in multiple mediums, um, how important do you think it is for creatives to have multiple streams of income from their different creative outlets? Ooh, see, that's this is a tricky one because I want to say very important, but I also have I'm a strong advocate of like if you have a creative process or pursuit, 
like a you need the time to like flesh it out think about it without selling it without selling a product without also selling takes it away from you know what i'm saying it becomes a job a chore so like you have to be very clear with yourself what this is so i've been really trying to figure out that balance um so in audio for me and and i count like pub like i do hosting like emceeing uh public speaking moderation you know ho- f- facilitation all kinds of stuff plus uh, teaching, um, you know, like, so that is like, I consider audio my job and is my mission to find as many avenues of income inside of my job. And then with the things that I create, I don't want to say on the side, but adjacent to it that I love, I gave myself a time to just make a bunch of things, learn how the material works, learn how the you know, like, what is my process? What does a TK piece look like when I'm doing visual art? Um, and then now I'm starting to accept the fact that people might want to buy it. And I'm like, okay, now what does that look like for me? So in my work life, I got many different streams of income. And in my art creative practice, I'm learning what what's the boundary you know, cause I still want it for myself, but I, I must, I love to, I do love a financial validation. Like, <laughs> you know, not gonna lie. That's what's up. Um, and I, I appreciate you acknowledging your audio work as work, but I'm curious to know, do you see your audio as an extension of your art? And, uh, if not, why not? Hmm. I absolutely see the audio work that I've been doing over the years as a as a as an art form because even before it became something that I could monetize or something that people took serious from me, I was making it without regards to whether they wanted it. <laughs> you know? So I think like a lot of times the money or, you know, getting paid is what validates us and what to make like switches from independent to professional. But like, honestly, the, the whole fact of the matter is you, you know, you're an artist. If a, if a, if a paintbrush falls in the w- in woods, are you still going to make art with it? Yes. Um, <laughs> it's just so, something to that effect. <laughs> like, so I was making audio forms of art, different kind of interviews, uh, audio drama, um, just trying stuff because also ignorance, right? Like when you don't know that you will do anything. So I've done a lot of stuff that I didn't know I was like, that had value before it had value. And I consider that part of the work, part of the art. Yeah. Um, and also it, it seems like the audio industry and just creative industries in general seem like they're taking a hit right now um and just feels like we're in a slow period but how do you see pivoting during these times like you know when things are slow what does the pivot look like for you yeah wow yeah so when yeah when the industry looks slow any industry um and i've talked about this because i come from i have a previous life as a healthcare professional so (laughs) career change pivot i'm not a stranger to um, just finding those common threads of like, okay, so I was a healthcare professional, then I turned to audio and there was always an undercurrent of me doing, I'm like a ladder person. I have to have one foot on the next thing before I take the other foot off the uh, bottom rung. So always like having a little piece of me in the next thing, but also finding out what my skill sets are. Right. So like team leadership, um, clarity and communication, all these things that you need in audio and also managing teams in audio I had from my healthcare time. So I had to identify what, what I was doing, what I knew how to do, and then take away all the extra stuff, right? You don't need to know that like I used to like give shots and, you know, turn people over, but you do need to know that I'm a responsible person that used to help save lives. Therefore, I, if I can do that, then damn, hire me. Like, (laughs) you know, I'm a responsible person that can lead a team that can communicate to you the idea, which is, this is the work of audio, right? It's communicating ideas from, you know, one vessel to another vessel. So, you know, just finding those 
things, the Venn diagram of what you used to do and what you're about to do and seeing where they cross over and explaining to people how to cross that over. Nice. Yeah. I love that. That actually uh, segues into another question that we had about storytelling, because you basically described how you're able to justify, you know, skills from one job to another and being able to to make those connections. So obviously you're a great storyteller in that sense. How valuable is storytelling to you when it comes to selling and marketing your products? Oh, super valuable. I mean, I mean, we see it every day, right? We get, we get sold stuff every day. And you, the difference between a good sell and a bad sell or whatever is you don't know when you're being sold to when it's a good sell, right? <laughs> but you know when it's a bad sell, same for audio, or like when you go to a concert and the, the sound is flawless. So the only thing you could talk about is the artist. They're like, oh, so great, wonderful, right? Bad audio, sound man about to get fired. So somebody getting fired tonight, right? So it's my and your and who all's listening responsibility to like figure out in in your storytelling, how are you selling without selling, right? And I also think that's something that podcasting is good for. A lot of people go into it and they're like, okay, so I want to reach all these people. And I'm like, okay, no. Um, <laughs> who do you want to reach? And what are you telling them that is like, not like, hey, download my book at the end of this episode. It's how are you giving value from the book? So then you tell a story about yourself, like something that people can relate to, you know, and I go through, I went through this in chapter three, but I'll tell you guys right now that this, that, and the third happened and I came through it. I'm talking to you today. And then, you know what? Casually, you just drop the name of the book. No big deal. But you know, let's go to our guest who too had challenges, right? You, you have to endear yourself, your product and, and make, make it feel needed by the person that is receiving the message. So how do you do that without saying buy my book? And that's like, you got, you got, that's also a personal thing. You got to figure that out. Yeah. I kind of think it's like this shirt that we have put out that says, uh, my price is my price. And, you know, it's a reminder for me every day when I'm having trouble with letting people know, like, my value and not even letting people know, but me knowing my value and being confident in that yeah. wearing that shirt reminds me my price is my price. That was Message. my sales point on that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the sound bite. So as artists, it's very easy to get caught up in what is my product? How can I sell it? How can I make money off of it? Which is good. Obviously we want to make some coin, but you still want to love and enjoy what you do. And for me as a singer songwriter, there was a point in my career where I wasn't super enjoying the process of making music anymore because I was so focused on, well, what can I do with this? How can I sell this? How can I get this to somewhere in the world to make me some money, get me some attention, get me some followers, etc. But um, I've been having a lot of fun writing lately and it's because I've been doing these 30 minute writing exercises where we just throw on a beat and we write to it and whatever we write, we track and that's it and we call it a day. And that's actually how we came up with this shit hard. Um, we recorded the record in October around Halloween. It was just a writing exercise at the top of a session. Um, shout out to Mike Brown, who also challenged himself during that session to take 30 minutes to make a beat. Then we took 30 minutes to write. Um, Eddie Wayne showed up midway through the session, freestyled the hook, and then you know got, got his right on. Um, so the record is really special to us in that way, and I'm really excited that it's out in the world. You've been hearing it in our intros and, and you know all throughout our social media posts. This Shit Hard is, is a fun record. It is a really important record to us just because as three queer men uh, who love hip hop, we don't get to see ourselves in those spaces too often. So I hope y'all enjoy it. CK, I have one more question for you. What advice do you have for creators who feel like they are only able to do one thing? Bro, like, no, right? Like, that means, I think that means when you think that you're only able to do one thing, you have to look into yourself or look at your life and look at the stories that you've been told. What's the script, right? Why do you only think you can sell one thing? Why do you, not your sell, do be whatever one thing right once i figured that out and the hardest for me the hard lesson was um i just learned that no one was going to change things for me no one was going to rescue me and once you figure that out like no one's going to pay these student loans uh 
help me fill out this application. Once I figured that out, I, I didn't care what people thought because if you can't help me, I cannot care about your opinion. And I need to cast off these scripts of like, for me being a good eldest daughter, a big sister that can help you through this, that, and the third, which I'm still working through. But, um, this idea of being one thing is, is wild to me. And we have to figure out who told us that, what were they trying to, what reason? Cause a lot of it for people of color comes through, like our parents tell us stuff to keep us safe. But, um, I don't know if y'all heard that like Slack notifications, <laughs> my bad. You quit Slack. Sorry. Yeah. So a lot of that comes through like safety and, pers- you know, like, so we have to realize also that we're safe and that means safety and freedom means you could try some stuff. And just cause it doesn't work out. Don't mean that like you shouldn't try another thing. Cause that's another thing as adults, we get fear of failure, fear of uh, making an ugly painting, fear of, you know, what if they don't, um, I don't get 20 likes on this thing. Maybe I shouldn't produce more of this product or this t-shirt or whatever. Like it's up to you, bro. Like you spending money making all these t-shirts. Um, Give them away. It's still marketing. Like, so anyway, I, I'm going on a tangent and I hope this makes sense. But I think to be more than one thing, you have to realize where that idea came from. Decide to cast that away. Decide what works for you. Don't have a, you know, don't have this fear of failure or fear of trying or fear of, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, and then do it. Put some things out. Just see what happens. Whether it's a product, person, or brand, as TK said, storytelling is so valuable to making that sale. Join us next week as we talk about shifting your mindset from artist to entrepreneur. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of The Creator's Toolkit.